Hey everyone, thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to um, join us for this very, very unique webinar. Um, today we're going to be doing um, the Jungle Survival Course in Guyana. Now I know that's um, something that might um, none of you might have thought of before, but this is so cool. And I'm really excited to have Nicola joining us from the Guyana Tourism Authority, all the way from Georgetown. Um, before we get started, I just want to give you some housekeeping notes. Please feel free to type through some questions on the webinar, on the GoToWebinar control panel. You can do that um, and type your uh, questions through so we can make sure that Nicola gets to those before the end of the webinar. Um, also, we're going to be recording, so if you have to step out for a call or um, take a lunch break or something like that, no worries. We are recording and we'll be sending you this playback. We encourage you to share those with uh, share the recording with your fellow colleagues. Um, but we thought the perfect way to start the webinar would be with a very, very short video. So, um, Nicola, if you want to go ahead and play that video, and welcome to Guyana. Yeah, sure. Thanks so much for playing that, Nicola. It's such a wonderful video, and we have that available for you guys to use. Um, I'd be happy to send that through on our follow-up for a social media post or for you guys to include in any kind of blog. But um, without further ado, Nicola is going to be um, taking us through the Jungle Survival Course in Guyana. Thanks, Jesse, and hi, everyone. Welcome to what I believe I think is our sixth or seventh webinar yeah. um, on Destination Guyana. I want to first welcome you to Guyana. It's a rare place and one of the places where you can still find nature's beating heart, as we would like to see. Let's get going. Yes. So my name is Nicola Balram. I am the Senior Officer of Marketing for the Guyana Tourism Authority, and we are semi-autonomous to the government of Guyana with the responsibility for product development and promotion for the destination, along with our extended team, such as emerging destinations in the U.S. market and our other teams in the U.K. and Germany as well. Just on the first couple of slides, it's going to have some basic information if you are new to Guyana or new to um, the webinar, so you can kind of have an idea of where the destination is and what are the products available before we go more in depth onto jungle survival. So Guyana is a small country in South America about the size of Idaho. It's located just below the Korean Sea and above Brazil. It is the only country in South America where English is the native language. What is our tourism product? We like to say our tourism product can best be defined in five main categories or pillars. There's nature and wildlife, active exploration, which jungle survival falls under, culture and heritage, birding, and conservation and safe travel. About 90% of the population live along the coastland, leaving the rest of the country untouched and ripe for exploration. Guyana is part of something called the Guyana Shield, 
which combines parts of Colombia, Venezuela, Brazil, French Guiana, and Suriname as well. It is one of the only four pristine tropical rainforests left in the world and covers about 1.2 million square miles of land. Guyana is often um, sold together with Suriname and French Guyana on many popular trips called the Three Guyanas. We are the same time zone as the eastern coast of the US and Canada, so it gives you um, little to no jet lag whenever you travel to the destination. Guyana's total um, square miles is 83,000 and it can be divided into three main tourism geographical regions. So we have the coastline region, which is um, where the north of the country meets the Caribbean Sea. The rainforest, which is mostly in the middle of the country, and the golden savannas, which is just below um, at the bottom of the country, closer to the border of Brazil. When you stay in Guyana, you're going to have different types of accommodations. In Georgetown, which is the capital city, you are going to find a combination of boutique and luxurious um, hotels. If you venture to any of the nature resorts along the coast, you'll have a more of an island style feel, which is the imagery you can see on the left hand side. When you get into the rainforest and the savannas, you're going to have more eco lodge style, which will be the middle and the right hand um, image here. This is actually a place called Cayman House, and it has a great treehouse vibe. It's great to know what Guyana is and what the product is, but the most important question is how do I get to Guyana? So we have a lot of different connections, direct and um, one-stop connections from North America, the UK, and from Europe as well. We do work with airlines such as Virgin Atlantic, Suriname Airways, British Guyana, Caribbean Airlines, Liat, um, Kobe Airlines, and American Airlines and JetBlue. From Miami, you can get a direct flight with Caribbean Airlines or Suriname Airways. From Toronto, Canada, you can get a direct flight with Caribbean Airlines. Um, you can also get a direct flight with American Airlines from Miami. From New York, currently you get direct flights with Caribbean Airlines. And in December 2019, you'll be getting direct flights from JFK in New York with American Airlines. And April 2020, JetBlue will start flying direct flights from New York as well. Currently, our American Airlines flights from Miami and those that will be launching from JFK are four times a week. They depart Miami and will depart JFK around 6 p.m. and arrive in Guyana about 11 4 to 12 midnight, and the returning flight will be around 1.15 a.m. and arrive in Miami and JFK um, early in the early morning hours to make your connecting flights if those are not your final destination going home. When in Guyana, the three main modes of transportation are by road, by river, and by air. By road will connect you with the main capital city of Georgetown and other areas around. There are many rivers in Guyana. You might use some of them to get between different destinations you visit. Um, and internally, from moving from the main capital city to a lot of where the indigenous communities are and the rainforest, you can go by private charter flights as well. The best times to visit Guyana largely depends too on the area you're, you're visiting. Um, we have two seasons here, the wet or rainy, or we would like to call it the green season, and the dry seasons, which are the peak seasons to visit Guyana. The peak seasons are usually September to April of the following year. Um, this is because during those peak seasons, it's easier to transfer and travel around the rainforest and the Rufinuni areas because of the lack of rainfall. Um, some areas in the rainforest do get uh, rain throughout the year because it is the rainforest. But during those months, it does not have as much as it would in May to June. The coastline has a bit of a different, um, different weather cycle, but you can visit the coastline pretty much all year round. Um, in terms of temperature in Ghana, it's summer 12 months a year. So always remember to walk with your sunscreen. Guyana is primarily um, made up of rainforest. It is a part of the Amazon basin. So we do have a lot of that biodiversity as well. It also has a lot of waterfalls, vast open spaces, savannas, mountains, and rivers. The image here is of Kaitra Falls. It is the 
key top attraction in Guyana and is about four to five times taller than Niagara Falls. One of the hallmarks of this attraction is that there are no rails between you and the falls. And on a daily basis, the, the largest number of visitors you would have at a time to that falls would be about 12, depending on your flights going in. To get to Kaitra Falls, you can either do a day trip by plane, or you can do a three to five day Kaitra Overland trek, which carries you um, over the river and you climb up the mountains from the bottom to the top. And then you get to take that hike back down again. It's quite an experience. Again, it has a lot of extraordinary biodiversity as well, including jaguars, giant anteaters, monkeys, caimans, snakes like the anaconda, uh, the arapaima, which is the largest scaled freshwater fish in the world, and over 910 species of birds. There's one single road that connects the north and the south of the country. And um, if you are traveling from the capital city to most of the product in the Rupununi, the South and North Rupununi, you'll be able to access it through this road as well. With many travelers, because of the time that they spend in Guyana, they usually take small planes to get to those areas as well. Guyana is known as the land of six races. Some of the most common you will find on your travels are African influenced um, individuals, those of East Indian descent and our indigenous peoples. Besides this, you will also see ones descended from Chinese, Portuguese, and Europeans as well. Some of the popular dishes you'll see no matter where you travel in the country are um, different types of curries influenced by our East Indian traditions. This is a picture of chicken curry or those in Trinidad call it curried chicken. There is, you'll, you'll find a lot of seafood, um, fresh food, fish and shrimp, um, and we use that to make burgers, dishes, um, appetizers as well. Plant and chip, which is a local street snack. Salted fish and bake, which is fish again that um, comes from a lot of our local rivers. And bake is something, um, it's very similar to our version of a scone, but it's, it's not dense inside, it's a bit more airy inside, and it's a very popular breakfast dish here in Guyana. Pepper pot is a traditional indigenous dish and it's made from a sauce that is made from cassava and pot roast chicken, which is very popular for daily lunches. Some of the activities you can find in Guyana or you can do on your travels will be horseback riding on some of our ranches, fishing in the rivers and oceans, visiting Dutch ruins, including Fort Island, Fort Zelandia and Kaik overall industrial tourism at our rice and sugar estates, um, and to some extent, gold and bauxite mines, depending on which tour you choose. Photography, as well as the main theme of this presentation, jungle survival. So before I get a little bit more into the jungle survival aspect, this map on the right highlights some of the key areas in Guyana. The star is our capital city of Georgetown, which is where you'll be arriving in, and I'll share with that a little bit more as the presentation goes along. But if you look at this map, there are two key areas here, Walt, um, one called Serana and one called Cayman House. And those will be the two main bases for a lot of the jungle survival expeditions offered here in Guyana. The other areas highlighted, such as Arakrama River Resort, Abdul Lodge, they're all within the rainforest. Um, but as we go through the presentation, I'll highlight why Saram and Cabin House are the two main areas that form your base for jungle survival. Before coming to Guyana, especially for jungle survival, your packing list will be a bit different. Um, on our general packing list for travelers, we do ask them to have a t-shirt, a long sleeve shirt, short pants and long trousers, walking boots, hiking boots, hiking socks, as well, personal toiletries, lightweight raincoats, because you will be going into the rainforest, a sunscreen, sunglasses, a hat, anti-malaria pills, insect repellents, and um, you should get your yellow fever vaccination before coming on this trip as well. For jungle survival, depending on um, the operator you use or the areas you will be around, they might ask you to bring some additional things 
and they will provide with you with a more specified packing list depending on how your trip will be for the next couple of days. But these are some of the essentials that you will have on any trip to Guyana. When you land um, in Guyana, you're gonna land at the Chedi Jagan International Airport, which is about 40 to 45 minutes out of the capital city of Georgetown. Usually you spend your first day and first night in Georgetown and you can either do a city tour where you get to experience some of the architecture of the, of the city and you can go to our local markets um, and have a lot of local dishes. Although Guyana is found in South America, its history and um, diversity is very Caribbean influenced. And you can find this a lot more on the coastland, which Georgetown is a big part of it. So you may feel that you, while you're in South America, a lot of the food that you get here and the vibe, as we would like to say, is very Caribbean based as well. From Georgetown, you're gonna take a small plane um, from one of the smaller airports to either Sarama, which will might be your base, or Cayman House Yubakari. Sarama is actually the first indigenous community in Guyana to start community-owned and led tourism. The two images here are of its equal lodge. Here, the villagers um, spend about two weeks, do a two week rotation, where they get to interact with guests. Your first night is usually spent at Sarama Equal Lodge, where you will speak to your guide on what um, the next days in the jungle will be like. You learn how to use whatever equipment and materials and tools that you have available, and the do's and don'ts of those next couple of days in the jungle. One thing you should know as well, while you will have a guide with you from the tour operator company that you work with, they also work with the local guides from these villages that know the area a lot more intimately. So your local guides will probably be from the same village and they will spend that night with you at Sarama Eco Lodge as well. And you can ask them any questions you want um, to learn more about the experience beforehand as well. The other base will be Kaiman House at Yubakari. This, um, this lodge is about three hours away from Sarama Eco Lodge. It's actually also doubles as a research center. And one of the biggest projects that they do is caiman preservation of the black caiman species and turtle conservation as well. The, um, if you notice, this has a different look and feel than the Sarama Eco Lodge. This is more of a tree house style which is a great thing to have in this area because each lodge that you visit will have its own unique um, infrastructure that you can enjoy. So while they're all equal lodges, they're all not the same experience that you get. Usually when you fly into, um, fly into this region, you either have your base at Climate House Yupakari or you have it at Sarami Eco Lodge. Sometimes you, depending on your itinerary, you can probably visit Sarama first as your first base. And then after you can do a visit to Yupakar before coming out to Georgetown. But that will depend on how you tailor your itinerary and the days available. From your base, uh, once you get your briefing from your tour guide and your local guides, you will venture into the jungle. One of the thing throughout this presentation, I'm going to highlight some of the things that you can expect. So some of the tools you will learn from your guides how to make um, can be found in the rainforest. You'll be able to make some local bow and arrows, a, a pot and what we call a fire pit out of bamboo, which is the center image here. And then your guide will also show you how to weave to make certain um, things that you need to build your shelter as well. This is what your home will look like for the next four to five nights, depending on the length of your itinerary. You will work with your team and your guides to make a makeshift shelter out of what you find in the rainforest. As you see, his bed is very comfortable for the nights over there. And don't worry, it's very sturdy and stable and you're gonna have all the materials you need with you. In terms of sleeping, you can either sleep on what he has there, you're usually sleep elevated or you usually walk with a hammock of your own and that will be your home for the night. To eat in the rainforest, sometimes you do carry uh, free, freeze-dried snacks and then most of the days too, you will hunt and fish for your dinner. Fishing is 
the bigger parts of that. And you can see that here are some of the species you will encounter, such as the vampire fish, the catfish, and many different snakes you will see in the wild. But we really don't eat the snakes in the wild. Um, some of the activities you'll enjoy will be fishing, wildlife spotting, and spending a day the as well. Once you've caught your dinner, you make your own fire and you make your own grill. You can either use the bamboo pot or a makeshift grill out of bamboo um, stalks where you get to roast the fish and then have that for dinner. Once you've finished your three to five days in the jungle, you're going to look as happy as these guys here. These are a group that finished about, I would say about a year and a half, close to two years, where they've completed their time in the jungle and they've came back out after and had a great time. Who are the local operators you can work with? Because this is a very niche and specialized market, there are two local operators that um, are the best for this type of tours. There is Bushmasters, who the owner is Ian Craddock, and he also leads most of his trips personally. He is the guy with the cowboy hat on the left. The next company is called Rupununi Drifters, and it's owned and run by someone named Ashley Holland. He's the guy on the right. They both do um, different tours. Bushmasters and Ian Craddock usually use both Cayman House and Saram as a base, and Ashley Holland uses Cayman House and Yubakari as a base. Again, also has a destination management company, which is Wilderness Explorers, and they can be that go-between if you don't want to connect directly with Bushmasters or Rupununi Drifters and make those arrangements on your behalf as well. But Ian Craddock from Bushmasters or Ashley Holland from Rupununi Drifters will usually be your tour guide. These two individuals love what they do and they love to be out in the wild as well. Some support that you can get from the Guyana Tourism Authority for new operators and airlines serving the destination. We do provide key information in the form of these webinars and any other information that you need through ourselves directly or our market reps. We can assist with coordinating travel related events, setting up interviews um, and meetings with our local tour operators that you need to meet with or anyone else within your interest. We do work on joint advertising and cooperative marketing campaigns. We can support familiarization trips. We do have two per, core, per our core markets every year, one that's more focused on media and one that's more focused on trade relations. So I encourage you to speak with Jessie and her team on that, if that's something of your interest as well. We would love to have you serving Diana. Um, we do receptions at the airport, depending on your request. And we do help with negotiation for hotel rates and working with local tour operators as well so that you and your guests have the best experiences possible. We also help in building up Ghana's private sector so that they can work to meet your needs. More information or details can be um, made available upon request. For more information, you can visit our website at www.ganatourism.com. That is the official destination website of Guyana and of the Guyana Tourism Authority. You can also visit www.exploregana.org, which is the website of the Tourism and Hospitality Association of Guyana. This is the private sector sister agency to the Guyana Tourism Authority. For official statistics um, on visitor arrivals and any other information that you cannot find on the guyanatourism.com website, you can visit statisticsguyana.gov.gy. For information on how to make investments in Sagana, you can visit goinvest.gov.gy. And for the official website of our main airport in Guyana, it's cgairport-gy.com. And you can also find more information about Destination Guyana on emergingdestinations.com as well. Just before I hand it out for questions, I do have one more video that will show you what jungle survival really looks like. So just hang tight for a second. And
This video is actually shot by Ian Craddock of Bushmasters on one of his latest trips. And um, he's been kind enough to lend it to us so that we can all have a better understanding of what jungle survival really is. And just so you know, it's not something that just males can do. I saw two females in that video as well. So it's open to all also. Um, for any questions, I'll hand it over to Jesse now. I know that I definitely want to do it. That sounds so awesome. Just um, something a little bit different that I know um, might not be the everyday request, but I know that a few of you are probably thinking that, oh, that would be good for um, Mr. Smith or Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the, the two clients that you have in mind. So really, really cool um, product. Thanks so much for taking us through that, Nicola. If anyone has any questions, please type those through. I know that we've taken up a good amount of time for your day. We like to keep you to about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, I did have a question about sharing of the presentation. Yes, of course, I will be sending through both the recording um, and the presentation as well as the videos um, that Nicola showed um, throughout the entire presentation. But um, if there aren't any more questions, please feel free to um, email me if one of them pops into your head. It's just jesse at emergingdestinations.com. Um, and we hope to have you all on our next webinar. We'll be coming up with our series um, that we'll do in October, November, and maybe December. Nicola and I were debating on um, the, the holiday season. So um, stay tuned. You'll get invites to those, and we look forward to having you in the future. Thanks so much, Nicola. Thanks, Justin. Thanks, everyone.